learning and memory learning is acquiring new knowledge behaviors skills values preferences or understanding and may involve synthesizing and processing different types of information benjamin bloom has suggested three domains of learning number 1 cognitive that is to recall calculate discuss analyze problem solve etc psychomotor to dance swim ski dive drive a car ride a bike etc and affective that is to like something or someone love appreciate fear hate worship etc these domains are not mutually exclusive for example in learning to play chess the person will have to learn the rules of the game that is cognitive domain but he also has to learn how to set up the chess pieces on the chess board and also how to properly hold and move a chess piece this is psychomotor part furthermore later in the game the person may even learn to love the game itself value its applications in life and appreciate its history this is the affective domain number 2 memory memory is usually divided into three storage systems those are sensory short term and long term let's discuss sensory memory sensory memory is affiliated with the transduction of energy change from one form of energy to another the environment makes available a variety of sources of information that is light sound smell heat cold etc but the brain only understands electrical stimulation the body has special sensory receptor cells that transduce this external energy to something the brain can understand in the process of transduction a memory is created this memory is very short less than half second for vision and about 3 seconds for hearing the sensory memory retains an exact copy of what is seen or heard visual and auditory it is absolutely critical that the learner attend to the information at this initial stage in order to transfer it to the next one there are two major concepts for getting information into stm that is short term memory first individuals are more likely to pay attention to a stimulus if it has an interesting feature second individuals are more likely to pay attention if the stimulus activates a known pattern short term memory stm after entering sensory memory a limited amount of information is transferred into short term memory selective attention determines what information moves from sensory memory to short term memory short term memory is most often stored as sounds especially in recalling words but may be stored as images as well it works basically the same way as a computer's ram in that it provides a working space for short computations and then transfers it to other parts of the memory or discards it stm is vulnerable to interruptions or interference stm is characterized by a limited capacity of up to 7 pieces of independent information the brief duration of these items lasts from 3 to 20 seconds decay appears to be the primary mechanism of memory loss miller's magic number george miller's classic 1956 study found that the amount of information which can be remembered on one exposure is between 5 and nine items depending on the information applying a range of plus 2 or minus 2 the number 7 became known as miller's magic number the number of items which can be held in short term memory at any one time miller himself stated that his magic number was for items with one aspect his work is based on subjects 
listening to a number of auditory tones that varied only in pitch each tone was presented separately and the subject was asked to identify each tone relative to the others he had already heard by assigning it a number after about 5 or 6 tones subjects began to get confused and their capacity for making further tone judgments broke down he found this to be true of a number of other tasks but if more aspects are included then we can remember more depending upon our familiarity and the complexity of the subject in miller's research there was only one aspect the tone for example we can remember way more human faces as there are a number of aspects such as hair color hair style shape of face facial hair etc we remember phone numbers by their aspects of two or more groupings that is chunking we don't really remember seven numbers we remember the first group of three and then the other grouping of four numbers if it is long distance then we add an area code so we actually remember 10 numbers by breaking it into groups of 3 within stm there are three basic operations number 1 iconic memory the ability to hold visual images number 2 acoustic memory the ability to hold sounds acoustic memory can be held longer than iconic memory number 3 working memory short term memory is also called as working memory and relates to what we are thinking about at any given moment in time in freudian terms this is conscious memory it is created by our paying attention to an external stimulus an internal thought or both an active process to keep it until it is put to use think of a phone number you will repeat to yourself until you can dial it on the phone note that the goal is not really to move the information from stm to ltm that is long term memory but merely put the information to immediate use let's discuss long term memory ltm this is relatively permanent storage information is stored on the basis of meaning and importance the process of transferring information from stm to ltm involves the encoding or consolidation of information this is not a function of time that is the longer a memory stayed in stm the more likely it was to be placed into ltm but on organizing complex information in stm before it can be encoded into ltm in this process of organization the meaningfulness or emotional content of an item may play a greater role in its retention into ltm we must find ways to make learning relevant and meaningful enough for the learner to make the important transfer of information to long term memory also on a more concrete level the use of chunking has been proven to be a significant aid for enhancing the stm transfer to ltm remember stm's capacity is limited to about 7 items regardless of the complexity of those items chunking allows the brain to automatically group certain items together hence the ability to remember and learn better the knowledge we store in ltm affects our perceptions of the world and influences what information in the environment we attended to ltm provides the framework to which we attach new knowledge it contrasts with short term and perceptual memory in that information can be stored for extended periods of time and the limits of its capacity are not known schemas are mental models of the world information in ltm is stored in interrelated networks of these schemas these in turn form intricate knowledge structures related schemas are linked together and information that activates one schema also activates other that are closely linked this is how we recall relevant knowledge when similar information is presented these schemas guide us 
by diverting our attention to relevant information and allow us to disregard what is not important. Since LTM storage is organized into schemas, instructional designers should activating existing schemas before presenting new information can be helpful in processing of the new information. This can be done in a variety of ways including graphic organizers, curiosity arousing questions, movies, etc. LTM also has a strong influence on perception through top-down processing. Our prior knowledge affects how we perceive sensory information. Our expectations regarding a particular sensory experience influence how we interpret it. This is how we develop bias. Also, most optical illusions take advantage of this fact. An important factor for retention of learned information in LTM is rehearsal that provides transfer of learning.